You have 10 years to get into the higher class, the higher social mobility class, or you and your bloodline are eternally finished forever. If you get money, you're just gonna be a robbery target for the women you date, for the government, and for the criminals. The best thing about my life, the reason I am so rich is not because I have money, it's because I have friends who I could give all my money to. The biggest scam of them all is the modern education system. And I can prove to you it's a scam, and they know it's a scam because it has to operate inside of a vacuum. Can't wait to go to court. I'm sure it's gonna be a fair trial. Can't wait. If you're a broke loser, you can stay a broke loser. That's completely fine by me. My cars need washing, you can wash them, don't care. <laughs> Never else in your life is a billionaire gonna care about making you money, ever, only now. Fix it. Fix it. I hope you don't get rich before you fix your problems, sir. You need God. Revert to Islam and move to Saudi Arabia. This whole thing is a clown show. Mm. This whole thing is a clown show. And... Andrew Tate, thank you very much for coming back on the CEO cost. It's been a long time, sir. It has been indeed. I like I the t-shirt. Well, thank you, man. It's good much. I'm going to give you one after. <laughs> Perfect. I want to start off with the podcast with this. Since the last time we spoke, I have to thank you because not only have you changed my mindset and my perspective on life, but I've seen personal friends start six-figure businesses. I've seen fat people go to the gym. I've seen men stop chasing women. I've seen a lot happen. And when I ask them all one thing, they say it's down to Andrew Tate. How does that make you feel? Yeah, that's amazing news. And it's good to know that I'm having such a positive impact on the world. It's also interesting because it's living the juxtaposition of the mainstream media and the government, especially in the UK, trying to ban me and convince the world that I'm the devil and that I'm evil. And at the same time, everyone's saying I'm doing such good things. And it's, it's certainly highlighted to me exactly how the mainstream establishment works and how scared they are of, of making men and people motivated in general. Because when you're a motivated individual, you pay attention to the things around you and you're not laying down ready to accept the slave programming. It happened the other day, I think it was yesterday, some idiot, from Leeds, I think, with a gun intended on shooting up a mall or something ridiculous. And the mainstream news article was Andrew Tate fan intends on, I've never, even, I've never even met they, this guy. Manipulate in a way where it's down to you sort of thing. Well, of course, they're gonna say anyone who does anything bad who follows me on Twitter is an Andrew Tate fan. 8.8 .8 million people follow me on Twitter. I'm sure if someone crashes their car, they're not going to say Taylor Swift fan crashed her car. Yeah, no, they, they don't, no, no, they don't no, care, yeah. right? You could be listening to Taylor Swift driving your car as you plow into a tree and they're not going to mention it. But it's, it's crazy how the whole establishment works. And I know my message is good and, and I know that I'm helping people. But I, the scary thing is when you go deeper down the rabbit hole, you understand that that's why they dislike me. Yeah, they definitely. dislike me because I help people. Yeah. They dislike me because I motivate people. They, well, just, that's yeah, they, want, they want to enslave people at the end of the day. Of um, course. We're going to get all to this later on in the podcast. But I should ask you this, right? <clears throat> From when you've come in line, the Top G lifestyle seems like the, the guy that can do it all. The Bugatti lifestyle, the private jets, the girls, etc., the fat house, all of it, right? And whereas we're seeing streamers making a shitload of money nowadays, where they can do the private jet lifestyle, have a car collection, nice crib, go to go along with it, but at the same time, they're not intellectually there, as you just said. Yep. So do you think the barrier to being the top G or the guy that people want to be is closing? I think that money's an amplifier. I've said this a lot of times, but I have to say it over and over again because I want people to understand. A lot of people think money will fix their problems and mm. all it will do is exasperate them. Yeah. If you're a coward, you will be a bigger coward if you're rich. You'll be more afraid of robbery. You'll be more afraid of people finding out where you live. If you're an idiot, you'll be a bigger idiot if you're rich. You're gonna do more stupid things than you would have done if you were poor. If you're a G, you'll be a bigger G if you're rich. So a lot of people don't understand that money doesn't change you. Money accelerates and exasper exasperates and amplifies who you truly are. The problem with a lot of these other streamers, as you just described, is they got rich young and they weren't shit. Mm. And now they're rich idiots. They Agreed. were idiots yeah. and now they're rich idiots. But here's what I'm saying to it, because let's just say the younger audience to that okay. want to be rich one day. Now, if you were my age, you could look at Andrew Tate and be like, okay, cool, I want to open up this business, I want to do this, I want yeah. to do this crypto, da, 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 da. eventually I'm going to be in that position. Whereas you can have the younger generation look up to streamers, I want to sit on my computer all day and make money like that. And, and some of them do, I mean- There's uh, no hardship to it. Uh, there is no hardship. First thing I'll say about streamers is, and this is my sneaking suspicion, none of them make the money they pretend they make. You know what's kind of weird since I became, 
I'll tell everyone at home how rich I am. I don't, I don't, I know this is supposed to be taboo. I don't give a shit. I pay myself a million dollars a week because it's a nice round number. I could pay myself a whole bunch more. Mm -hmm. That's what I pay myself. And that's what I spend. And I spend it all every single month. I buy a new car three times a week. So you spend $4 million a month. Correct. I buy a new car three times a week. I bought a new car yesterday. What car did you buy? The new Vantage came out. Yep, went, so went, that, went on the yeah, configurator. Yep. Ticked every box. Bye. 316,000 euro. <laughs> yep. Bought it. When does it come? Dunno. Will I drive it? Probably not. Just bought it. I, I even saw that vlog where you bought the M3. You just wanted to see what the handling was. I want to see what the steering was like. Yeah. I've driven that car for one kilometer. And that's it. It's on our driveway. Yeah. I don't want it. Freaking so um, that's how much I make. These streamers, when they get these. $20 million contract or $30 million, they announce these big contracts. Well, that is done so that the platforms can try and attract more streamers. Of but course. truthfully, they say $30 million contract, that's probably across three years, and they have to pay 50% tax, and there's a performance bonus. They only get the 30 million if they get X amount of views, which they're never gonna get, blah, blah, blah. All in all, they don't make anywhere near the money people think they make. I mean, okay, I have a Bugatti, everyone knows I'm famous for having a Bugatti. My car was $5.4 million. Where's everyone else's? If everyone got a $50 million contract, why has no one else got a Bugatti? Because Lambos don't matter anymore. No one cares about Lambos. Wait, we're going past stage. Oh, no, Lambos, Lambos yeah. are boring. Yeah. Five years ago, you had a Lambo, you were the man. Now, bro, like, yeah, my chick drives yeah. a Lambo. Who yeah. gives a shit? <laughs> so, bro, I buy Lambos in, on bulk. Give me four, give me three, give me all, all the colors. Lambos are nothing. So, where's everyone else's Bugatti? Well, they can't afford one. And it's only $5 million. And I say only, and I'm not trying to be arrogant, but it's only 5M. Like, it, it, it's a month's wages for me. If, if, if these people are making 50, 40, 30 million, like they say they are, where are all their nice cars? They, none of them are making the money mm -hmm. they say they are. First, that's all a lie. And that's just to convince kids to give up their future to just try and become famous streamers. And then we go down the path I just described before. When you try and become a famous streamer and you're an idiot, you haven't had a difficult life and you have no wisdom, nothing to teach, you can't give value, you end up being a clown, doing dumb shit online, trying to be an idiot, which just further pollutes society as a whole. So mm -hmm. it's a trap. Yep. That's the first thing. The second thing is, the only good thing about having money is that it amplifies your attributes, as I said before, which means if you make money the hard way, all of the attributes you learn along the way can be amplified by the money. Yep. If you learn how to make money dif in a difficult way and you gain stress tolerance and you learn how to manage people and you learn how to do meetings, you learn how to speak well, you learn how to be charming, you learn how to be funny. These are all skill sets. They're you skill sets. And then you get the money and these skill sets are amplified and now your life is great. If you make money any other way, let's say you make money the easy way, let's say you win the lottery or you catch a crypto pump or you get a streaming contract for setting yourself on fire. Bro, these kids are pu putting forks in plug sockets, bro. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like bro, if you get money for that, there's no point having the money. Yeah. Because another thing about money that most people don't understand is a lot of people think, oh, you get money, you get girls, you get respect, you get clout. No, you don't. No, you don't. Not if you act like that. Not if you're an idiot. Yeah. If you get money, you're just gonna be a robbery target for the women you date, for the government, and for the criminals. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. And if and you're not smart, it. if you're not street smart, you're not gonna see any of it you're coming. You're not gonna see any of it coming, and you're gonna get wrecked. So you don't wanna make money the easy way anyway. Another thing is funny, I was this was last night. You know what? I'm I'm worth I say I'm a billionaire, and people think I'm lying about that, but I'm not lying. And I want people to understand at home that I have an online educational platform called The Real World where we teach people how to make money online. 18 modern wealth creation methods is $49 a month. It turns over, let's say, $13, $14 million a month. At $14 million a month, that's a seven times multiplier, which is pretty standardized for a tech company. I have a billion dollar company, which I own 100% mine. I own it. So I'm a billionaire. And I was sitting at home with my brother last night, smoking a cigar, and we were playing Uno. A little board game. Like, yeah. Uno, bro. Yep, okay. And it's serious. Street rules. Bro, we, we don't take Uno lightly. So we're playing Uno. And Tristan said, when we were broke, we sat in Luton playing Uno. And now we're billionaires. We sit here playing Uno. What's the no, difference? No, nothing changes. Nothing, changes, nothing yeah. changes. Because the best thing about life is going to be spending time with the people you care about and your brother. Okay, now I have better security. Cool, now I'm smoking a cigar. Yes, my house is nicer. But the fundamentals of my life are basically the same. If I have any spare time at all, I'll sit with my brother and we'll do something asinine. And a lot of people, especially these people who are getting rich, because they're not quality people and they don't have quality relationships, they don't have brotherhood. They don't have a network of people they can rely on. They don't have a woman who truly loves them. And they're gonna try and buy it and they're gonna find out that can't be done. The best thing about my life, the reason I am so rich is not because I have money. It's because I have friends who I could give all my money to. And my girl. 
and say, I'll be see you in 10 years. You say, cool. Mm. And it be, and that, that's money. That's wealth. That's rich. Most people can't do that. These fucking nerds make a bunch of money. They can't trust anyone around them. They can't trust their chick. They can't trust their friends. They can't trust anything. Then what do you have? It's only money. I, and I think money is probably the third or fourth most important thing in the world. It is important, but above that is health and, and love and your network and people you care about. There's certainly things above money. And if you have all of those and then you get money, <clears throat> you can amplify it. But I think a lot of people don't understand that money's an amplifier. I said this often to people who ask me questions. I've had little nerds come up to me and go, I want to get rich. I was like, bro, you need to stop being a geek. Because <laughs> if you get rich, you're going to be a mega geek. You're, you're a dork. Fix it. Fix it. I hope you don't get rich before you fix your problem, sir. Because you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Because if you get rich in the state you're, you're in, you're fucked, done, bro. Yeah. You're, you're going to get fucked over one you, time. You don't want that. You need to go and fix everything about yourself. And then maybe God will reward you. Maybe you're not rich because you're a little nerd and he's tired of it. Yeah. I'm tired of it. I met you for five seconds. I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> so you, you, you need to understand these things and build a base of life and, and understand what's important. And then you get money and it allows you to amplify all of it. Here's what I'm going to ask you, Tate. Yeah. Would you say that the real world is one of like, you know, the main income streams for yourself? No. So I wouldn't say it's the main income stream. What I will say, first I'll say why it exists. I'm going to go conspiratorial again. God, we love it. Why not? I've sat in jail trying to analyze which power structures want me in jail. I've sat there and said, okay, why do they want me in jail? Well, the military industrial complex wants me in jail because I tell kids not to join the army and not to go die in a foreign war for no reason because every reason they tell you to go to war is a lie. So the army wants me in jail. And then I sat there and thought, okay, well, the... The feminist and the matriarchy want me in jail because I'm inspiring masculinity, which is resistance to their power. And where there's a power struggle, there's conflict, and they mm -hmm. want me in jail because I tell men that they're allowed to have standards. Yep. I'm seen you're as allowed misogynist. to be a man. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm seen as a misogynist because I effectively say, as a man, you're allowed to have a standard. Yep. You're allowed to say to a woman, no, you're not supposed to speak to me that way. Mm -hmm. I'm a full-grown adult, and I want to be respected in my household. That makes me a bad person. So that's why the matriarchy wants me in jail. And then I sit and say, what other powerful structures want me in jail? Well, maybe the educational platforms want me in jail. Maybe the education system wants me in jail because that's the biggest scam of them all. The biggest scam of them all is the modern education system. And I can prove to you it's a scam. And they know it's a scam because that's operating inside of a vacuum. If it wasn't a scam, they would allow people to take out a loan and decide what they spend it on. Do you want to start a business? Do you want to buy crypto? Do you want to buy a house? Do you want to buy a car? Mm -hmm. Do you want to get a degree? Yep. No. You can only get a degree with a loan because if they give you any choice, no one will pick a degree. Mm. Because they know it's useless, because it's out-of-date information that takes too long to teach, and you get massively in debt. Think how fast the world moves. Think of things that are relevant now that weren't relevant three weeks ago. Well, things, and you're yeah, learning yeah. things in a degree yeah, yeah. that were Look, from 20 years ago and it takes you four years to learn. That's going to be completely irrelevant by that point. Bro, Christmas literally. feels like a lifetime ago. Mm. It's been a month. And you're going to sit and go to school for four years and learn things that, that from 1996? Yeah. And think that that piece of paper is worth anything? Yeah, it's not. The whole thing's a scam and they know it's a scam. So I sit there and go, well, why would the educational systems want me in jail? Yeah, I say it's a scam. But also maybe it's because I own university.com, www.university.com, and I have an online educational platform, which is the largest school on the planet, and we're teaching financial literacy, and it costs $49 a month, less than a Nando's, and we'll teach kids how to make money online, and they won't go to the school anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, so the educational system wants me in jail, the matriarchy wants me in jail, the military industrial complex wants me in jail. Can't wait to go to court. I'm sure it's gonna be a fair trial. Can't wait. I'll be real tape. I can't even post this podcast on TikTok because yep. my last TikTok account got banned. It wasn't even clips of you. It was me and the guest speaking about you and TikTok was like, nope, harmful content taken down. Yep. And we were literally just saying you're a nice guy. Yep. Yep. So I can't even post this on TikTok. And I know one of the reasons for your meteoric rise was to do with the fact that TikTok was getting flooded with agitated content, literally yep. top G everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But now that's not the case. So how do you actually keep people coming back to you with the real world which was once obviously Hustle University, right? Yeah. How do you get people coming back and, you know, make sure they know that we are still here? Yeah, so TikTok have gone, I'm well, so have Meta, so have Instagram, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I mean, Facebook. Been banned I'm, I'm banned yeah. everywhere, yeah. right? And you're right. They don't like people saying anything nice about me. They don't like my voice. Mm. They don't like a still picture of me. Nothing. Literally it's crazy. Nothing, yeah. All I do is I, I make it obvious to people that the platform exists. And 
to further go down the rabbit hole of why that platform does exist, it's not for me to make money. Mm. I can resign now. I can retire now for the rest of my life if I wanted to live semi-sensibly. If I stopped buying three cars a week, I could probably still do that for a good 10 years. But, you know, I could calm down and live a very nice life. The reason I have the real world is the same reason I have the war room. Because when I talk about all the problems I talk about, the astute members of the populace will sit and say to me, okay, then what's the solution? Andrew, you're right. You're right. The legal system's a joke. They're out to keep us all enslaved. We're not allowed to have an opinion as a man. We live in a matriarchy. My job hates me. What's the answer? And I'm kind of, uh, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself that I've only come up with two answers so far, but they're the only answers that have ever worked for me. And perhaps there's another answer that's better than the ones I have. But the only answers I can come up with, in fact, three answers, I apologize. There's one God, you need God, that's the most important thing. The second is you need money. And the third is that you need brotherhood. And I believe if you have those three things, you become much harder to be damaged by the system. When I go to jail, I can call my brother and make sure that my women and my children are taken care of. I can have someone to look after them. I have a bunch of money so they can be taken care of. I can get the best lawyers. I have influence. So when they lie about me on the BBC, I can tweet and call them a liar and get more views than the BBC does. Yeah, literally, yeah. More views than the BBC. Andrew Tate, this is, I can just say lie, fake news, boom, done. So I can fight against them. Well, how do I fight against them? I fight against them with my influence, which is based on my brotherhood and the people I work with inside the war room and the money I have and God. So when I created the real world, the primary objective is for people to learn how to make money online so they can escape the matrix. Because if you have a job, you're gonna be controlled. If you have a job, you can't have an opinion anymore. You can't talk, you can't say certain things online, you'll lose your job. You can't not get the vaccine, you'll lose your job. You can't not wear a mask, you'll lose your job. You have to obey, you have to comply, or you can't pay the mortgage. If you make money for yourself online, you're now harder to control. Mm -hmm. So when they come along with their infantile ideas and try and force you to perpetuate and purport them, you can sit and say, no, I'm making my own money, you're a liar. So that's the reason I made The Real World, and that's the reason I made it so cheap, $49 a month, so people can join and learn how to make money online. And the reason there's the war room is because of brotherhood, because I believe that if you analyze any period of human history, including Genghis Khan, as we just discussed, it's always been about brothers. What was Genghis Khan? It was a bunch of his boys, a bunch of your boys, Get on a horse. I'm just conquering. Yeah, Literally. bro. Yeah, we still conquering. do it. Yeah. You and your boys, you all get together. You go, go to the club, the cars, you get some yeah. girls. That is the same. Yeah. Everyone gets on a horse. Let's ride that way. What's over there? Don't know. Who cares? We'll find out. We'll take, take it. it. <laughs> yeah. So brotherhood has always been what conquest is about. And it's also always been a small band of brothers to resist evil. Let's say when Genghis Khan got to Vienna. I'm not going to discuss who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. It's just the natural law of the universe that conflict appears. But the people who were defending Vienna were what? Brothers, mm. brotherhood, get your sword. Who are they? Let's go. So if you're in a war, and I believe we are, and I think anyone who's looking at life as anything other than war can't be competitive and is destined to be decimated. If you understand you're in a war, then you need brotherhood and you need money. What does Ukraine keep asking for? Money. You need money to fight. And you need men you can count on, which is why I have the real world that teaches people how to make money online and, and the war rooms the, you can join a fraternity. You have the men. That's right, because I believe if you start to make a bunch of money and you get a bunch of men you can rely on, you then become much harder to enslave. That's the reason those two things exist at CobraTake.com and that's the reason I tell people to join them. Mm. And it's not because I'm philanthropic. I want to make it clear. I know the world thinks I'm the nicest man ever. But uh, they don't think that. I'm just going to say it. But... It's not because I'm philanthropic. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm trying to help you guys at home. No. If you're a broke loser, you can stay a broke loser. That's completely fine by me. My cars need washing. You can wash them. Don't care. <laughs> but I don't care. I don't care. But if I'm going to try and crack the matrix, I can't do it by myself. So I want all of the people who agree with what I say and think like I think crack to, the be, matrix together. To, yeah, to be rich. Mm. Andrew, you have a thousand fans. Do you want poor fans or rich fans? I want rich fans. Rich fans. Yeah, of course. Andrew, you have a thousand fans. Do you want them to all know each other and be part of a brotherhood and be part of a fraternity or do you want them to be independent and isolated? Know each other. To know each other. Yeah. That's all it is. I'm helping my, I'm raising an army. I'm Genghis Khan. Get on the horse, guys. Get on the horse. Let's go. We're going to fight. And you can join and I'll make your life better 
by extension, that's one of the greatest things about my brand. I think it's probably one of the reasons I have no problem with the fact they're going to throw me in jail, et cetera, because I know I'm living for a purpose. I know that just like you said earlier on this podcast, if you're an Andrew Tate fan, your life improves. And that's a good feeling. If you're a fan of a normal streamer, your life doesn't improve. If you're a fan of Logan Paul or KSI or these idiots, well, then what do you get? You get sugary drinks and WWF. Great. You don't get anything. I know that if you're a fan of me, your life genuinely improves. And in the karmic circle of the universe, all of that positive energy will end up back with me. There's no way you can take thousands, perhaps millions of people and make them feel more dedicated, more motivated, more happy, more positive, more mm. inspirational. You can do all of those things and not benefit it from it in some way. Whether they put me in jail or not, there's good vibes in the universe. I'll pick them up. It's fine. And I'll walk out, tell the BBC, hello, speak to Lucy. No big problem. <laughs> so... I, I, mm. I, I am very, I'm very proud of myself because I, I know I'm doing the right thing. And that's the reason I refuse to shut up because if I was only entertaining people, I could shut up. Okay, there's no point going to jail to make people laugh. No, but there is a point in going to jail to make so many people's lives better. So to sorry, to, as a professional, to go back to the, why the real world exists and how I get people to go there. I don't try and sell it to anyone. That's actually a really good point. It's a good question you asked me. Because I'm just trying no, to see. No, no, but it's a good question Go because on. because if I if I am a billionaire and I am obviously monumentally financially successful and I've just explained to people at home why I want them to join because I want them to be rich. I have a vested interest in them being rich. Your university professor does not have a vested personal interest in you becoming rich. He doesn't care. He's doing a job. I have a vested personal interest in trying to make my fans as rich as possible. Never else in your life is a billionaire going to care about making you money, ever, only now. It costs less than a Nando's, it's $49 a month. If you still don't join, well then you're a dumbass. And I don't want you to join anyway. So I've mentioned it enough times, I feel, and I also feel like now I'm at a point where I'm above getting people to join. It exists. And if you're not a loser, you'll join because you want to save your life. And if you don't want to save your life, you want to stay a slave, you can go stay a slave. What do you imagine the world to look like in five, 10 years time? As I mentioned earlier on, you got AI and you got the Apple Vision Pro and eventually they're going to come out with sunglasses like the ones you're wearing now that have every little thing that you need to see in front of you. So what do you imagine the world to look like? Is it a scary place or is it a thing of where it's yeah. interesting? It's a good question. And I'm going to tell people how I came to my answer. I think the best way to predict the future is to study history. I believe in times of old, let's go back the last 3,000 years. If you were a king, your life was pretty good. Or it was as good as life could be. To be a king, you had power, influence, money. That's what you had, and you were a king, and you lived a good version of life. If you weren't a king, you were an average man, a common man. Mm -hmm. And I think the world is cyclical. When you were a common man 2,000 years ago, you were effectively a slave and life was terrible. And then that was the same all the way up to perhaps the 1930s, 1940s, being a common man was pretty terrible. And perhaps it was the war and the massive loss of life. Perhaps it was something else, I'm not sure. But I kind of feel like there was a golden period between the, in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, maybe even the 90s, where being a normal, hardworking man, because life is cyclical, went from being a terrible existence to quite a good existence. In the 60s, you could be a normal man who worked in a factory, an unskilled labor job, and with one wage, you could afford a house, you could afford a car, you could afford to raise a family, your children would not be taught garbage in school, yep. your wife would respect you, you'd have a home-cooked meal. Times were good. Like, times were good. All the things I said about playing Uno earlier in Hyper Bowl are true. What matters most? Your wife loves you. You're respected as the breadwinner. Your kids respect you. They listen to you. Mm -hmm. Your house is clean. Your house is safe. Your car works. Your life is good. And I feel like because it's cyclical, those good times are over and we're going back to where it was before. The kings have always been fine and we always will. But if you're the common man, I think that the good days are over and I think it's going to get harder and harder. Inflation is going to absolutely decimate your spending power. Now, inflation doesn't damage me. Inflation doesn't damage me because I own all the assets. Inflation just means houses get worth more money. Mm. Inflation just means Bitcoin and stock and land and houses 
all go up. Inflation means my car collection is no longer worth 110 million. It's now worth 300 million. Whatever. Inflation, I own everything. Inflation is amazing for the rich man. 100%. I love it. But for the broke man, you're done. You're fit. You're done. You're finished. Because inflation is meaning your money is worth less. And it's going to take more of your money to buy a house. And your wage is not going to increase at the rate of inflation. It's becoming more and more impossible for you to own assets. For us asset owners, inflation is fantastic. So the common man is about to get wrecked. I think inflation is going to make it exceptionally difficult. I think AI is going to make most jobs worth less than they already currently are. Mm -hmm. If you're a newspaper writer or whatever. AI is taking AI that. AI is going to take that in the next 10 years. Yep. And you're going to, if you still have a job, it's going to be only managing the AI, which means you're going to be paid even less than you're currently paid. I think life is about to become exceptionally difficult for the people in the middle. I think the good times are old, over. I think it's going to go back to the feudal system of kings and serfs and peasants. And I think if you're a normal average person now, you should feel deep fear and panic and understand that you have a certain amount of time to get into the higher bracket of, of the social class before these hard times come. And the most scary thing about these hard times is I have, no, I, I have no real evidence for this. It's just in my mind. I feel like the gap is going to permanently close. In olden times, let me think about this thought, because in olden times, the chance of turning into anything more than a peasant when you were born a peasant was effectively zero unless there was chaos, unless there was a war or some great catastrophe, well, which allowed that. social mobility for you to go to war, win, get a knighthood for bravery, get some land and change your social mobility class. But there had to be war and chaos for you to escape because without the chaos, it's kind of like a prison break. When all the rules are being adhered to and the prison is operating as it should, you're stuck in your cell. But if there's a prison riot, you have a chance to escape which means uncertainty and chaos are required for the difference in social mobility. And that's always been the case. But now I feel like with AI and certain other things, although there's gonna be instability in the world, although they're gonna to continue to lie to us, I feel like the matrix is gonna gain enough control to keep us all in our pods or in our 15 minute cities or our electric cars will be turned off or we need to get our bug rations for the week so that there can't ever be enough true chaos for you to escape. Mm. There won't be true social mobility. And I feel like there's gonna be a close the people who are rich now, their bloodlines will be rich for a very long time. And the people who are poor now, if they don't get rich soon, in the next 10 years or so, they're never going to get rich. You're never going to get rich. The prices of houses are going to continue to go up. Prices of land is going to continue to go up. Inflation is going to continue to happen. Your wages will not catch up. It's going to get harder and harder for the average person to ever stand a chance of like owning now any or assets. Never. Yeah, it's, almost, it's now or never. Yeah. It's almost impossible right now. How does the average person on an average wage buy a house in London right now? Yeah. It's almost impossible already. I think in the next 10 years, it's going to become truly impossible and they're going to use AI to keep the gap closed. And what's interesting about that is, well, I'm, I'm in the rich team, I guess. Uh, but what I find most interesting about that is the socio ramifications of the fact that I think this is quite pertinent to most average people. I think most normal people understand if you were to ask them how is the economy, they'd say, well, it's impossible. I can't pay for my bills. I can't pay to eat. I can't afford a house. I can barely afford my mortgage. I'm never going to get rich this way. They understand all of this, but they're not panicking. Mm. Why are you not panicking? The, the Titanic just hit the iceberg. You may not be in the water yet, but it's a certainty. There's nowhere else to go. It's going to sink. It's going to happen. Panic now. Don't panic at the end with everyone else as they go into the icy depths. No, I would argue if I was on the Titanic and it got struck by the iceberg, I could have got a lifeboat nice and early. Now, I wouldn't have women and children first. I'm just using this as an example, analogy. Yep. analogy. I, know, I know where you're going with it. I could have gone to the top deck when no one else was panicking and said, you know what? I want this. I want to go on a lifeboat. No, I don't feel comfortable going on a lifeboat. And the guard probably would have said to me, you don't need to go on a lifeboat. It's no big deal. I said, yeah, but please just give me the lifeboat or here's some money or whatever. I want this one. Give me this one. Everyone started panicking at the end and there was no lifeboats left. And people are sitting here now going, oh yeah, the economy's bad, but you know, maybe if we vote for this person, who the, f don't want to swear, wrong. Who are you going to vote for that's going to put money in your pocket? Actually, actually come along and say, here's money. Nobody. You still got to pay your council tax. You're still a brokey. Nobody cares. No one you vote for is going to change it. It's going to get worse. It's going to continue. And you know the boat is going to sink and you're not panicking. 
That's why I kind of catch myself. And one of the things I try very hard not to do is become elitist. Because when you've come from the absolute bottom to the absolute top, and you've done it all off of your own back, and hard work and dedication and never missing a day. The only shortcut to life is to never miss a day. One, because of comp compounding interest. And two, because sometimes you get lucky. And you'll never miss a lucky day if you try every day. If you don't try every day, you might miss your lucky day. And that's what people don't understand. If you never miss a day and you never don't try and you're always on time, was I late today? No, on time. And you try and improve every aspect of your life and you're a professional and you try and make sure that you analyze your decisions, you give yourself feedback, you don't make mistakes, you're not lazy. If you try and you make it to the top, you end up elitist because you look at the people down below and you're like, well, why didn't you try? I did. Oh, I did too. No, you didn't. didn't. That's a lie. Mm. Now you're lying to me and that annoys me. And you catch yourself being very elitist. And this is what's scary about it because I'm from a Luton council estate and now I have all this money. But if I meet somebody who's truly broke, truly broke, I'm not talking about you not have hundreds of millions, but if I meet somebody who's broke, I think they're an idiot. And I, and I catch myself going, um, is that bad? Am I elitist? Or do I sit down now and I just say, no, I started lower than you and beat you. How are you poor? You're, you're lazy. Okay. Okay, fair enough. I was going to say, why would you say if they, they're an idiot if you were once in that position as well? No, I was, but I got out. Mm. And, and I think one of the three, there's only three reasons you can't get rich in the world today, which is either you're stupid, you're lazy, or you're arrogant. And I find the most common one is lazy and arrogant. It's not stupid. There's nobody at home who is too stupid to become rich. Mm. I'm sure anyone watching this podcast right now, if you were to sit down next to me and I were to say, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, you could do it. Of course what? you could. But you're too lazy to learn how to do it yourself. And you're too arrogant to listen. And you're too arrogant to listen. It's not about being stupid. You're lazy or arrogant. It's one of the two. Those are the two most common factors of people. So when I meet people who have truly failed and they pretend to me that they didn't want to fail, I know they're one of the three. And it's usually arrogant. Because when I sit and say to them, you could have got out, they don't say, you're right, I could have got out, I didn't try. That shows humility. Yeah. They don't do that. They say, no, 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 because it's a uh, 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 excuse, excuse, someone else's fault, the matrix's fault, no self-countability. Oh, well, you don't know what you're talking about anyway. Arrogance, arrogance, arrogance. Sounds like feminine arrogant. mindset to me. Well, yeah, exactly. And then it's they're going to lose. Yeah. So I catch myself being elitist and I try very hard not to be because I don't consider myself a rich man. I'm a poor man with lots of money. And what's scary about being elitist is if I'm from a Luton council estate and I have a bunch of money now and I see the common man as a lazy idiot, Imagine how the elites see us. And then you start to really go down the rabbit hole when you understand these people who've been in charge of the world for a very long time, who own the banks, who believe they're genetically superior to us because why not? Their family's always owned the bank. They can be a fat loser, but they just believe they're something because why not? They have a big vote, so that's just what they're gonna believe, isn't it? Mm. Imagine how they view the common man. You think they give a shit about you or your family or your income or your wages? You think they care about you? You think they're going to make life easier for the common man in the next 10 years as you've just asked? Or are they going to continue to decimate your lifestyle for their own forever profit? There's no light without dark, which is a basic fundamental law of the universe which can't be broken. And especially as these large companies want forever profits, which they do, and they own everything. Like, I don't think many people understand. If you go into Sainsbury's and you look around at the brands, you will struggle to find 10 brands that aren't owned by the same company. Yeah, yeah, the whole that. thing's owned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same company that owns Sainsbury's owns every brand. It's all, they own everything. So if they want forever profits, which they do, they're not going to do that without... Owning everything. Well, well and also, you, you have to take that money from somewhere. If they can make you poor so they can get richer, they will. Mm. If they own all the assets, they want inflation. They want inflation. They don't care. They don't care about you. They don't care you can't feed your family. Why would they? So, and you can also, you can also look at it from a global, a global perspective, which is quite interesting. Because Europe, America was built off the back of World War II. World War II made America rich. But Europe, for the longest time, got rich off the exploitation of second and third world nations. That's how it got rich, by building empires in Africa and, and, mm -hmm. and Asia, etc. Colonizing countries. Yeah, colonizing countries. That's how they got rich. And now we have populations in, in Europe and in the West, which are decadent, and we want uh, high wages, and we want maternity leave, and we want holiday pay, and we want good working standards, and we want good working hours, and we want nice chairs to sit on. Now we're entitled. 
And if you're a company and you need slaves, do you want entitled slaves or do you want slaves who are just going to do their job for low pay? And then you start to understand why immigration is being unchecked on purpose so they can bring in people to try and work jobs for basically nothing who don't want standard of living and don't want standard of work. And what they're effectively doing now is instead of exploiting the second and third world to benefit Europe, the globalists are now decimating Europe on purpose so that they can live somewhere else. And okay, that's going to prop up the economies of the second and third world. So the whole thing is reversed. Instead of destroying, instead of destroying the second and third world for the benefit of Europe, they're going to destroy Europe and that's going to benefit the second and third world. Mm. But they're globalists and they don't care. All they care about is forever profits. They'll go live in Saudi. They'll go live in Mumbai. They don't care. They're not tied to the land or tied to the place like the average European is. So if you're the average man in a European country, and you're not financially free and you're stuck somewhere in the middle, not only is your life gonna get harder, but also the place you live in is gonna get worse. Your wages are gonna go down. Crime's gonna increase. All of these things are gonna happen so that the people in charge can get their forever profits and avoid all the mess they make. And it's all done purposefully. If I was an average person, I'd be genuinely afraid. I, I mean, it's easy for me because I have so much money. Okay, I'm, I'm currently restricted in Romania and I'm under a matrix attack and they put me in jail, blah, blah, blah. One day I'll get out and one day it will be over and I'll still be a millionaire and I can look at the map and go, where is safe? Tokyo, cool. Done. Most people can't do that. Do that, yeah. They can't do that. They're stuck. And the fact that that doesn't bother them or they don't panic, I find flabbergasting. I mean, the, the iceberg has struck the Titanic. How long can you have a border where people can arrive by dinghy and throw acid in people's face until your nation has fallen. Mm. How long will you allow this to happen Nation's until you already. realize it's done? <clears throat> it's done. It's done. And how long will you sit there and get hit by endless bills that continue, inflation that wrecks your currency, wages that don't increase, new taxes with ULEZ cameras, uh, unchecked immigration for All people it, yeah. who, who don't have a passport, crime rates increase. Bro, I said this to Tristan. We were saying how we miss England because we're English in our hearts and part of us miss it. And I was saying, you know what? If I lived in England, I couldn't even protect myself. I have guys here with guns because I'm currently on bail and I can't carry a gun. Otherwise, I'm strapped all the time. If you come to my house, there's a big gate and there's pit bulls and there's four guys with weapons, guns. You need SEAL Team 6 to get in my house. There's bulletproof doors and I have a gun next to my bed. I'm the final boss. It's going to be a shootout. In England, I can have all the money in the world. I can go to Radlett. I was looking at a house in Radlett. I'll say it right now, it's 12 million pounds. It was gorgeous. And I thought it's, it's worth 20 million. For 12 million, it was worth Bargain. It. Bargain. Yeah. And I was like, Tristan, if we bought this house, the problem is we couldn't even protect ourselves because eventually someone will work out it's our house. It's just like, <clears throat> it's just like all the footballers. Of course. All the footballers, when they go to play matches, they all get robbed. Bro, eventually someone will work out it's our house. The only way you can protect yourself in the West now is to hide. Mm. I was like, we can buy this house not put it in videos, not put it on social media, not invite girls over, because you know what'll happen? You'll invite a girl over one day, and yep. she'll say, I'm coming with my friend Lucy. From the, not from the BBC, a different one. But like, okay, Lucy, she comes. Lucy turns up, she's a seven. You don't talk to Lucy, nobody likes Lucy. She sits around, she's a seven. She sends the location of yours. She sends the location, she knows. Next weekend, she's out sniffing coke with some dickhead, and she's like, I was at Tate's house. No, you weren't. Yeah, I was, I was at Tate's house, look at this picture. Where was it? Here, boom, bomb. That's now it. The, the men, they now know where your house is. Location they start talking about it. Mr. Bugatti, Mr. Diamond Watch. I'm sitting in my Radlett house, there's fucking 25 windows, six door entrances. I'm like, Tristan, we can't even hire armed guards. Who could we even hire to protect the house? I could come along with a million dollar a month contract. I'd end up with G4S, some old man sitting in a little box. And when they rock up, 20 dudes with blades, it's over. <laughs> you can't even be rich in England unless you want to hide. Tell me this, yeah. I wear, sorry, on, I wear bro. a $400,000 watch in Bucharest, Romania. In London, I can't wear it. In London, I don't wear it. So we're talking about how the nation's failed. You could be rich in England and you're still not safe. Mm. You still have to pray they don't find you. You have to live like a hermit, like a cockroach under a rock and hide. Or maybe you get a chance to call the police before they chop your wife's hands off. Oh, that's great. That's how fallen this nation is. And there are people there with no money. They're not even rich like me. They have no money. And they're sitting there going, it'll be okay. Maybe if we get Rishi Sunak out and get another one in. <laughs> no, it won't. 
No, it won't. It is a failed society. You need God. Revert to Islam and move to Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, none of that will happen to you. This is what I was going to say. So tell me, picture this for me. I yeah, paint me this picture. The case was dropped. You're free to go wherever you want. You get on your private jet tomorrow. Yeah. Where do you tell the pilot to go? Well, that's I'm talking about to reside, not just holiday. Yeah, to reside. Yeah. And that's the thing that's interesting because I really truly believe the Western world has fallen now. And one of the things I prioritize now in my stage of life is safety. I don't see the point in anything if I'm going to end up killed. By, and if you're going to kill me, at least the Matrix has to kill me. At least make it a cool story. Mm. He was telling the truth. He did fun podcasts. They assassinated him. Make it good. I don't want to die because some idiot wanted my watch. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, want to, I don't want to die for that. And I feel like the whole Western world is that dangerous now. I, I make this clear. When I go to London, I'm probably the most nervous. I don't know how anyone lives in London without feeling nervous. I, I'm so nervous all the time. And it costs me such an exorbitant amount of money. If me, my brother, and a couple of friends go to London, we'll, we'll jet from here, that's 50 grand. And then there's four of us, that's four rooms. And we'll want to stay in a five-star hotel. So that's two grand a night. So that's 10 grand in hotels. And then I have my security team there, it's three grand a day. Uh, so it's, it's 13 or 14 grand a day in hotels and security, 50 grand to get in. Then I'll go shopping, of course, normal. But even when I'm walking around Harrods, my head's on a swivel. And I've got three dudes with me who are six foot eight. And I'm still like... And then, and then you'll hear about someone get robbed just outside Harrods yeah, while you're in Harrods. You're like, how do people live in this city? And they're just living there like, oh, it's not that bad. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I've never had that. This is the capital of the poorest nation in the European Union. I've never had any problems here. I've never had, I drove a Bugatti around the streets. I parked my Ferrari on street corners. I wear a $400,000 watch. I've never had anything. Yes, I have security. Yes, I had armed guards. But for the years before that, I never had any trouble. What's interesting about it as None. well is that these, these things stand out from the crowd. Obviously, I've been here for you know a couple yeah. of nights now, and you don't ever see a Ferrari, Bugatti, Lamborghini, yeah. or anything yeah. like that. So when, when you see Tate in his Ferrari, you yeah. know. Yeah. So it's very easy, if this was like London, your target, 100%. Oh, bro, 100%. This is my point. Lucy would give the location up and I'd be a target and I'd be decimated. So how, how do you have a nation where you're not allowed to be wealthy without hiding? Where you can arrive without a passport? Where they can't catch people who decimate people's faces with corrosive substances? Where there's people in a room, the, the, those who are supposed to be designated towards enforcing law and justice, trying to put me in jail because I said women can't park. This whole thing is a clown show. Mm. This whole thing is a clown show. And only God can save us now, my friend. I don't know what the West is going to do. But this clown show is built on the back of the taxes of the hardworking average man. You're the average man. Not only is your life not only is your future not only are your children going to be finished, you're paying for this. You are paying for all of it. And then, if you ever get to a point of finance where you don't have to pay for it as much, or you can escape, one of your ex-girlfriends will call you up and demand money. And if you don't give it to her, you go to jail. What planet are we on? The Western world has fallen. And empires rise and empires fall. This is the cyclical nature of the universe. That's fine. But to sit and try and pretend it hasn't fallen is hubris. It's being an ostrich and sticking your head in the sand. And the smartest thing the average man can do is realize that yes, the Western world's fallen. And two, you have 10 years to get into the higher class, the higher social mobility class, or you and your bloodline are eternally finished forever. Yeah. Which goes back to a point I said earlier, if I'll teach you how to make money online for $49 and you understand you have less than a decade to save your entire bloodline and you do not join, well then you're a loser. And your great grandchildren will wake up one day in their slave pods eating the cockroaches and they'll ask, their mother, why was granddad a loser? Why didn't granddad try and save us? And you're gonna have to sit there and come up with some answer for them. You're gonna have to say, oh, well, he was busy. Try and justify it somehow. Try to justify it, he was <laughs> busy, he was jerking off the Pornhub. Oh, he, he was busy, you know, it was hard for him. It was a bad economic climate. Give a bunch of excuses to your bloodline as they continue to be slaves forever and washed my children's cars, fine. But if you have a brain, you're gonna understand you're running out of time, you're gonna fix it. Especially if you understand the nation you're in is sinking. The Titanic you are on is about to sink. Everyone in England, it's done. It's over. It's done. So where do you go? Good question. I like... You was in... Before your arrest, you was in England, but before that, you was in Dubai for a few months, right? I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. And 
I guess that's one of the best things about being rich. And that's why these globalists will destroy nations for profit because they don't care. Because in every nation, there'll still be a nice part, right? So a globalist can come and fly and land his private jet at a private airport, big and hill, doesn't mm -hmm. even land at Heathrow. And he can go for two days and see Windsor Castle and then he can get back on his jet and then he can go to St. Moritz in Switzerland and then he can go to Riyadh and then he can go to Tokyo and then he can go to Maldives. And that's a, a fun three months. You don't need a house. Mm. If you have a house, it's just to keep your clothes. Your on. house is your jet. Your house is your jet. So things are different when you're rich. And also, since I've been raided three times now and people I care about have been raided by the British police only a few days ago and any address you have is only a target for the enemies. You don't own that address. Oh, this is my house. My house is my home. Bet it's not. Boosh! Please! What? Your house is your home. Muddy footprints everywhere, and they turn the whole place upside down. They search everything, and they go through all your private things, mm -hmm. go through all your private stuff, and guess what they get to do after that? They steal everything they want. Steal this, steal that, Take steal. It, they yeah. just rob you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they come, they rob you. My house in Romania was robbed by the Romanian police. Houses in England are robbed by the English police. Why do I even want a house? You know what I want? I want a phone, a laptop, a backpack, a car, and a jet. I don't want a house anymore. So you're asking me where I'm gonna live. I don't know, because now I don't feel comfortable owning a house. Because every single time I get a house, sooner or later, on a long enough time frame, friends come to visit, it seems. So I don't enjoy having a house anymore because that feeling of home, that feeling of security has been destroyed. The sanctity of a household has been destroyed for me so many times. I don't feel like a, it's, I don't have the homey feeling. In fact, I feel most comfortable somewhere transient. I feel most comfortable in a hotel room. And I look around and go, if the police kick the store in, they're gonna steal the coffee sachets and they're gonna steal the TV remote and they're not mine. And I don't care. I've got my pillow, I've got my bed. Done. Don't care. So, what don't you do? So, I don't want a house. I don't wanna live anywhere mm. anymore, which is kind of scary, but this ties into how the globalists think. They all think the same as me now. Mm. Why do I need a house? If we have a house, it's an investment. We won't buy a house to live in. We'll buy a house as part of a real estate fund. And we'll buy a house in the south of France for $26 million and people will rent it off of us and all the money will go up the chain through our various shell companies for our real estate funds so we can hold wealth and, and outpace inflation. We don't buy a house to live in. I live in five stars and I'm gonna live in five stars forever because it allows me to one, be geographically free mm -hmm. and two, bro, they're after me. They're like, it, it's you scary. Go from bounce, place Where do to place. I, yeah, but, yeah. But, but you find safety in that. And I think so do the globalists and so do the people at the top because they understand the Titanic is sinking. Do so you, they, 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 they're the same as me. Do you feel like because they're after you, you have to bounce all the time so they can't get you? I don't think it's, I don't think it's just that. I think it's that when you're at, when you understand how this world really works and when money has no value to you anymore and you're truly, absolutely rich, you understand the advantage of not being geographically tied down. There are opportunities happening in Tokyo right now that people cannot take advantage of because they can't go to Tokyo or they can't live in Tokyo or they can't be in Tokyo. Mm. And it's the same in Kuala Lumpur. And it's the same in Mumbai and the same in Dubai. And same in... When you have geographical freedom, you have a lot more opportunity, which is the first thing. Second thing, I would say it protects you to some degree. But thirdly, and most importantly, the reason the globalists do it is because they're destroying nations in real time and they don't care and they'll just go wherever it's safe. But for me, you're saying, where would I move on my jet once I'm free? I don't know, but I don't think I'm going to stay still probably. I don't know if I'm ever going to have a house again. I don't see the point in having a home because home and the idea of home is that it's yours. And I have learnt through experience that I don't, it's, it's, not, yours. it's not mine. It's not yours. And anyone at home who thinks, oh, I've got my house and I'm going to work hard and pay my mortgage and I have my uh, live, laugh, love thing and I have my, my sofa and I got my remote and I'm my comfy chair. It ain't yours, bro. It's not yours. Andrew, I want to appreciate you. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast. And hopefully, I wish all this issue with yourself and, you know, the law and all that sort of stuff can go to shit and basically come back to normal, get your freedom back. And then we'll link up in Dubai or Saudi Arabia or wherever let's, we may be at the time. Let's do part three. Part three, exactly that. Guys, make sure you subscribe, like, comment. Also, I was going to plug your social, but I don't even know if you can do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I am, I'll do a quick plug here. Guys, if you liked what I said today, it's the tip of the iceberg. I, I, I have to censor myself so they don't kill me right away. So if you want to hear more about what I have to say, go to corporatetape.com. I have a completely free email list. You can sign up there. If you want to learn how to make money online, you can join the real world. And if you want a fraternity of brothers who understand the truth about the enslavement, which is coming for us all, you can join the war room. All of those things are accessible at cobratate.com. 
If you want to really piss off the educational establishment, you can go to university.com, which also leads to the real world, but using that website really makes them mad. So if you've wasted money on a degree at any point in your life, that's how you get retribution. Join the real world body at university.com. And I'm only on Twitter uh, at Cobra Tate. Shout out to Elon Musk. Shout out to Elon. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.